Number four then from paper one of the 2021 National 5 resource paper. Angles in a triangle. What does it tell you? It tells you this line is a tangent to the circle. Centre row. It tells you that P to N, the line from P going through the centre of the circle to N is a straight line. And that the angle up here at P is 14 degrees. You have to find the size of this angle. Calculate the size of the shaded angle ONM. Well, there are two triangles, so it's just, first of all, what kind of triangles have you got? Well, if that's a tangent and that's a radius meeting at the point of tangency, that's a right angle. So you've got right angle triangle. And then in here, that's a radius and that's a radius. So that's an isosceles triangle. So you know that these two angles must add up to 90 because you've got 90 already. And in this one, these two angles must be the same. And there must be whatever's left over to make 180 from this angle. So it's actually quite quick. You can get this angle here straight away because that's the complement of it. You've got 90 already, so you could put down the working. So angle POM would be 90 minus the 14. So that's going to be 76 degrees because you've got a right angle triangle. So I'll just put that in there, 76. Now to get to M, you're going to go through a couple of steps which will in fact undo each other. From 76, you can find it's a straight line at supplement. I'll find it anyway. Well, it doesn't take a lot of finding, does it? Because it makes 180. So that's going to be 104. But then what you're going to do next is say, right, I've got 104. So these two angles must add up to whatever makes up to 180. In other words, that's the supplement, which takes you back to the 76. So these two angles here turn out to be the same as that one. Now, there's a couple of patterns here that I mention very often. So I'm just going to go straight to my answer now. So angle, whoops, ONM is effectively going to be a half of the sum of these two, which you know to be 76. So I think I'll just put a half of 76 because I just went from 76 to 104 back to 76 for the sum, which makes that 38 degrees. Now there is a pattern in a circle which would take you to this one straight from this one. If you know the angle at the centre from two points in the circumference, then the angle at the circumference, anywhere in the circumference, is half of it. This angle is always half of that one. Another pattern which would have taken you from the 76 to those two is that business in any triangle. If you draw a line outside a triangle, that's called the external angle. The external angle is equal to the sum of the two opposite angles. Has to be, it's the same reason as that. Because that's the supplement of it, and those are the supplements of that. So those must be the same as that. That was the pattern you had here. So you've got these two things you could have thought of. The external angle in a triangle is equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angles, or the angle at the circumference is half the angle at the centre, coming from the same two points. Number five then, just for two marks here, the number of absentees were there. That means it's just a number, so there's no units in answer. Blah, blah. The results are shown below. Find the semi-interquartile range of this data, which is just numbers. Oh. First thing would be put them in order, but that's been done, so that's nice and easy, they are in order. Then, how many numbers have I got? Because to get the quartiles, I need to find the places that divide them into four equal groups. So I need to know how many there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's double that, twenty. So if I put them into four groups, divide that by four, that's five. The remainder is important, because what that says is you've got exactly five in each group, and none left over, so there's nothing left over to go into the gaps in between. They would have been handy, because they would have been the quartiles. They would have been the numbers that split them into four groups. But there's nothing there now, so you're going to have to go in between to find the quartiles. So, four groups of five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then obviously the same underneath. There's the four equal groups. So that's the first group, the second, the third, and then there's the final four. So the first quartile is whatever number would sit in here between these two groups, separating the first quarter. 
There's the median, the second quartile, and then there's the upper quartile. So, the lower quartile, well, that must be between the 12 and the 14, because I've got nothing there. So what would fit between a 12 and a 14? Take the average, 13. I want the highest quartile. That's between a 23 and a 24. So that's a 23.5. So there's the first mark. Get the two quartiles, as in the upper and lower. Now, semi-interquartile range. So range means the difference between the highest and lowest. But it's the quartile range. So it's the difference between the highest and lowest quartiles. Inter already says that, really doesn't. The range already applies in between. And semi means half of that. So it's half the difference between the highest and lowest quartiles. Well, the highest quartile is 23.5. The lowest quartile is 13. So it's going to be a half of, and that's unfortunately 10.5. So that's 5.25. And that's the answer. Question six then. This diagram shows part of the graph of y equals kx squared. So that's a parabola passing through the origin. It gives you a point on it, the point 2, negative 12, and it says, so what is the value of k? What is that coefficient of x squared? All you need to do is substitute those values in for x and y, and that will leave k, because that equation's got to be true for every single point on the curve. So it must be true for that point there. So if you've got the point 2, negative 12, that means putting it into this, I'll write it up here, y equals kx squared. That means the y coordinate, negative 12, must be k times the square of the x coordinate. Now doing that gets a mark. Substitute the coordinates into the equation because they must fit. That just leaves that unknown. So that means that k is going to be, just reading it this way now, it was a negative 12, it was getting multiplied by 4, so divide by that 4, so k is negative 3 as you might have expected, because it's upside down. So k would have to be a negative number for the th second mark.